When we use the word strong to describe an acid or a base, we are not referring to its corrosivity or its powerfulness. It's not a reference to its ability to eat your skin off or anything like that. A strong acid or a strong base is just simply one that reacts completely when it is placed in water, meaning that it doesn't exist in equilibrium. So for example, here is a strong acid, HBr, and when you put HBr in water, it reacts completely, meaning forward arrow, not in equilibrium. The products of this reaction are the bromide ion and the H3O plus ion. And this, again, this is what it means to be a strong acid not in equilibrium. There are six strong acids, or maybe seven, depending on which source you are referring to, depending on which textbook you're using. The strong acids are HCl, HBr, HI, HNO3, nitric acid, HClO4, that carbon looks a lot like an oxygen, HClO4, and sulfuric acid, H2SO4. Sulfuric acid is a diprotic acid, meaning that it has two hydrogens on it, but only the first hydrogen, the, the first loss of the H plus ion is one that we would consider strong. The second hydrogen does come off of H2SO4, but not in a complete reaction, it comes off in equilibrium. Now I said that depending on which source you're using, there might be seven. So um, if you're using a different resource, it might list HClO3 as another one of the strong acids. HClO3 is just kind of like right on the fence of being a strong acid or a weak acid. So some people include it as a strong acid and some do not. And then all of the other acids are weak. So any other acid that you come across, is going to be a weak acid. And in the next video, I'm gonna talk about what it means to be a, a weak acid. Um, here is a list of just some of the most common weak acids, hydrofluoric acid, HF, nitrous acid, HNO2, acetic acid, CH3, COOH, carbonic, H2CO3, HCN, hydrogen cyanide, HSO4 minus after H2SO4 loses its first hydrogen. And you get the idea. Literally all the other acids, aside from these six or seven, all of the other acids are going to be weak acids. And like I said, I'm going to talk about weak acids in the next video. Strong bases, same situation. A strong base means that it's one that reacts completely with water. There aren't as many strong bases as there are strong acids. And strong bases also, they, they don't really react with water. They just kind of fall apart in water. KOH is an example of a strong base. And when you put it in water, it just dissociates into potassium ions and OH minus ions. Strong bases are substances that completely dissociate, again, not in equilibrium, and they produce the hydroxide ion. And like I said, there aren't, um, there aren't a ton of these strong bases, barium hydroxide, BaOH. This dissociates into the barium ion, Ba2 plus, and two hydroxide ions because of that um, coefficient down there. Sometimes when you're looking at the reaction of a strong base, sometimes you'll see H2O written underneath the reaction arrow. This is just there as a way of communicating that water is necessary for this dissociation to take place. If you just have some solid KOH in a jar, it's not going to spontaneously fall apart. You've got to put it into water for this to happen. Lithium hydroxide is another strong base, LiOH completely dissociates to make lithium ions and hydroxide ions. Uh, and then another, the last um, common one, NaOH. Um, and again, the trend here that you're gonna see, whether we're talking about a strong acid or whether we're talking about a strong base, the trend here is the complete reaction, the forward arrow in all of these. That is what defines these as a strong acid or a strong base, not in equilibrium. In the next video, I'm going to be talking about weak acids and weak bases, which do exist in equilibrium. So that'll give you some contrast to this.